troubleshooting is finding what is wrong so that it can be fixed. At times, you will need the help of a specialist in both finding and fixing what is wrong with your AC motors. But you can do many things for yourself. Most of the AC motors you operate are squirrel cage induction motors. Therefore, our discussion of troubleshooting is limited to that type. You can do a good deal of your troubleshooting by sight. Smoke coming from a motor is a sure sign of overheating and requires immediate attention. Notify your crew chief or head operator at once. One possible cause is overloading. Check the ammeter reading and compare with the nameplate ampere rating. For motors not equipped with ammeters, current draw may be measured with a portable ammeter. If an overload is indicated, it may be a process overload. For example, the pump driven by the motor may be pumping at greater than design rate. For the protection of the motor, a process overload should be reduced. Yet, it may be very important to maintain high rates. Unless you are quite certain of the proper action, consult your crew chief or head operator. An overload may also be a mechanical overload, excessive friction in the motor, drivetrain, or driven equipment. Unless you are trained and authorized to locate and correct such troubles, follow local procedures in seeking help. Visually observing dirt in the ventilating air is a good indicator of dirt in the motor, which can cause overheating. Cleaning motors requires training and skill. Get qualified and authorized help. Overheating may also be caused by short circuits or grounds. Finding and correcting these troubles is also the job of trained, authorized people. A highly visible trouble is failure of a motor to start. The trouble may be in the line, the electrical supply. Only qualified and authorized people are allowed to work on the electrical system. If the load is too heavy, the motor is likely to kick off. Remember the limitations on efforts to start a motor. It's easy to burn up a motor by repeated efforts to start it. Reduce the load or get qualified help to find the cause of the overload. You can do some of your troubleshooting by ear. Audible symptoms of trouble include excessive hum, regular clicking, and rapid knocking. But any unusual sound should be investigated. Excessive hum may be caused by an uneven air gap, which is an early warning that bearings need replacement. Or the hum may be caused by an unbalanced rotor. Solving either problem is a job for the person who has been trained to do it. A regular clicking is probably caused by foreign matter in the air gap. To remove foreign matter requires removing the rotor, another job for the trained and authorized person. Rapid knocking is probably caused by misalignment, causing the shoulder of the shaft to pound against the bearing end. Realignment must be done by trained people. Now turn to your workbook and complete exercise number six. Your instructor will answer any questions you may have. You can do quite a lot of your troubleshooting by feel. For example, Vibration can be detected by feel. Just place your hand on the motor housing. If you have any doubt, have an instrument check made. Vibration may be caused by misalignment. Also, the vibration may originate in the driven equipment. You may have to run the motor disconnected to find out. Vibration following repair may be caused by misalignment or an out-of-balance rotor. Motor overheating can easily be detected by feel of the motor housing. One cause of overheating is process overloading. For example, a motor-driven pump delivering more than its design rate or delivering at design rate a liquid with a specific gravity higher than design. Mechanical overloading is caused by excessive friction in the motor, drive train, or driven equipment. An overloaded motor requires more current, amperes, than its nameplate rating. 
you may still need help to determine the cause of the overload. To protect the motor, an overload should be reduced. Yet it may be very important to maintain rates. Unless you are quite certain of the proper action, consult your crew chief or head operator. Another possible cause of overheating is dirt in the motor. You can usually detect this condition by the presence of dirt in the ventilating air. Where a motor is equipped with filters, dirty filters can also cause overheating. Cleaning of motor or filters should be done by trained, authorized people. Short circuits or grounds can also cause overheating. Finding and correcting these troubles must be done by trained, authorized people. You can also detect bearing overheating by feel. Among the causes of bearing overheating are misalignment, excessive end thrust, and sticking oil rings in the case of sleeve bearings. Follow your local procedures in correcting these causes. Too much grease can cause overheating of grease lubricated ball or roller bearings. The remedy is simple. Relieve the supply to the point set by the manufacturer. More often, a bearing, whether grease or oil lubricated, overheats because of too little lubricant. Keep all oilers, lubricators, reservoirs, oil mist systems, and grease cups filled to the proper level. Consult your lubrication chart or unit procedures for proper lubricants. Troubleshooting may be difficult for you at first, but if practice does not make perfect, it at least makes proficient. The more you learn and practice about your motors, the better your troubleshooting will be. Now turn to exercise number seven in your workbook. If you need help to complete the exercise, ask your instructor.